but we've largely gone through the speeches and you've heard the arguments one way or the other. If people uh, wish to insist on speaking, I will recognise that right. But I'm proposing that we, uh, that we adopt understand, uh, under the standing orders the rules of debate that say uh, three consecutive speeches uh, uh, and then followed by a speech uh, to the contrary or, or three speeches to the contrary, three in favour, three against, if, if people do want to debate it. We don't want to continue this debate um, through the whole morning and uh, run finance and performance uh, later in the day than it needs to. So that would point be of my order. proposal. Point of order. And point of order. Yep. Point of order. Point of order. Yep. Uh, Mr. Councilor Chair, Quax. You're, you're quite entitled to uh, uh, invoke that uh, standing order. Uh, that's a closure motion, and you've got to put that to the vote. You can't, uh, you can't on your own uh, say that after after uh, three speakers for and three speakers against that you're going to then call the vote unless you call that procedural motion and have a vote on it. I hope that's clear. Yep. Um, I'm looking, Mr Chair. I would be inclined to disagree with that interpretation of the standing orders. Yep. And I would agree with your interpretation. It is at the discretion of the Chair to call those votes at such a time yep. once three people have spoken for or against or for and against. Okay, it doesn't thank depend on a procedural motion. Thank you very much. Let me, let me just read to members uh, standing order 1.4.3, limits on numbers of speakers. If three speakers have spoken consecutively in support of or uh, in opposition to a motion, the chairperson may call for a speaker to the contrary. If there is no speaker to the contrary, the chairperson must put the motion after the mover's right of reply. Yep. That's, what the, that's, what the, uh, that's what the standing orders say, and I'm simply suggesting that we should follow uh, that standing order because we've had the debate effectively already, Councillor, as you, you. as you understand. So thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, we will now move uh, to, uh, to the screen, and you'll see that the first uh, motion to be voted on, moved by Councillor Fletcher, seconded by Councillor Cooper, um, is an amendment. Let's take them separately. The amendment to E. Uh, are there any speakers to E? Point of order. Um, I believe understanding orders. I was the one that adjourned the meeting yesterday, so I have the right to resume the debate. You, you may do, indeed. Councillor Clough, the floor is yours. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Councillors, I, I went to the... Um, effort of actually getting us to move the minutes from yesterday and I did that deliberately just now because what those minutes show is that we voted unanimously on every single item except one and that sent a very strong signal to the government that we were unanimous about the petrol tax but unanimous about everything else except obviously the, the ports issue. Uh, that to was consult. also important to show that to the people of Auckland that we were going out to consult on something that was again pretty well unanimous except for you know uh, the debate we had but the amendments were lost and in the end the record showed unanimity so I just want to make that point because we did really well yesterday I thought we did really well we we reached a position it was a long day but we reached a position and I, I felt and I wasn't here for the first LTP, but we'd actually got things through pretty smoothly uh, comparatively, and, uh, and it's a very far-sighted sort of document we're going out with um, by the use of targeted rates. So I just want to just, I'm not going to make any more speeches on anything. Um, I'm happy to second the ACIL um, resolution later if it, there's not a seconder, but um, I'm yep. not, not going to vote for either of these additions, I believe we reached a, a pretty good position with, with the um, natural environment levy um, and, and it's always nice to have more but I think a point that the Mayor was making quite strongly and I think I did as well is we're basically going to have to dig into budgets elsewhere and we've still got huge pressures when it comes to Tanuku and, and um, you know and parks and, and parks and sports areas and basically uh, recreation space and we haven't really faced those and we will when we come back for the real budget <coughs> item and the other issue of the, the CV versus fixed value I mean I'm going to distribute something that all councillors have got but may have forgotten but it really it's penny pinching where 
We're really smacking around those that can least afford it just a little bit more. And whether you've been in South Auckland, Councillor Newman's area or whatever, but we're smacking some people around when they don't need to be smacked around anymore because of the valuations and, and that. And then I just make the point again, and Andrew Duncan verified it, over 50% of the businesses get hurt, small businesses get hurt by going to a fixed rate as compared to capital value. You're just helping the big, the big ones. And, uh, and philosophically and ide ideologically, some of us want to do that, but uh, it's, they don't need, they're not getting smacked around, you know, if it, whether it be Sky City or, or, or other big companies, they can afford to pay a little bit extra for the environment, given what they put the pressures they put on our environment, on our roads, and, and go, water going into the harbour and stormwater, etc. So, I'd hope that we don't spend too much time on the um, the capital value versus fixed value. We've moved on from that, and my colleague to the right here, who who was the the instigator and, and designer of the interim transport levy, has, has also moved on. I'm not going to speak for Councillor Cashmore, but he's moved on to say, look, I think this new CV arrangement we've got where we're going for the differential at 25.8 is is fair and um, it, and makes it more equitable so I just um, just strongly encourage all people to vote against these two and I'm I'm not gonna I obviously by seconding the ICL I'm giving support to that but I'm not going to speak to that at this stage so that's all I need to say yeah. thank you very much councillor Clo so what uh, we're intending to do is to take e f and h separately and I have a call from councillor uh, Fletcher on uh, oh, well you could speak on all three but we'll take we'll vote on the motion separately well thank you um, your worship I intend to speak to the amendments in my name together um, I think yesterday was an important day and I think that there should be a concession on all sides that a number of issues were agreed to on the basis of going out to public consultation and giving Aucklanders a genuine say in shaping the city that they want. Um, for myself there were a number of issues yesterday and I wouldn't want um, for the chair of the finance committee to misunderstand my vote. My vote was one to enable the voice of Auckland to be heard. But there were two areas in terms of providing genuine choice that were missing. One is extremely dear to my heart, as you know, and that is in the area of the environment and the ecological programs that we want to set for Auckland. I believe the program that we are putting out, as voted on yesterday, does not fully equip Aucklanders with the information they need to know that on those things that are dear to them, whether it's pest-free Auckland, whether it's the risk of curry dieback, um, the Haraki Gulf pest control, where there's been so much done in terms of um, restoration programs and re, um, you know, just the, the, all of the many island-based programs that have taken place, allowing the reintroduction of, of rare bird species like takahe and brown kiwi. I would like to at least put before Aucklanders if we are genuine about our environment, if we are really going to take control and set a new chapter in terms of environmental responsibility, the options that we are putting up at the moment are limited. It is just um, environment light. I want environment rich. I don't know how people will actually respond to that, and I know in the consultation it will be drawn to their attention that if they <coughs> go for the more expensive option, well then naturally there will be trade-offs in other areas. But that's a decision for the public of Auckland. I don't believe it's a, de a decision for us here today. So I felt that by limiting the options being put to Auckland, Aucklanders, it would, it would give them a misguided view on what it will actually take to seriously readdress the environmental issues that have not been dealt with well by this council to date. So I would implore you um, in the spirit of genuine consultation and choice, I would implore you to actually reconsider um, your vote on the issue of the, um, the natural environment. Um, with regards to the amendment that had been put up in the Finance Committee yesterday by uh, Councillor Simpson <coughs> and Councillor Cooper, again, I see it as a matter of choice. I don't want to get into the, 
the, the, the depth of the arguments, and I don't want to prolong the, the patience of this room by uh, continuing the debate, but I would say it's about choice. And if, if we are to have a mature response from the people of Auckland, let's, let's treat them properly, let's respect the fact that they want to see choices and that they will make the right decisions. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Your Worship, I, I recommend these amendments uh, to, to the governing body uh, for their consideration. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Wayne Walker. Yeah. Um, uh, could I just, before you, you start, I, I'm intending to give people uh, 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 the bell at four minutes and 30 seconds, which means you've got 30 seconds to wind up if you need it. Don't, don't feel obliged to, to fill the whole space. <laughs> <laughs> Not just you, Councillor, <laughs> any Councillor. I'll be considerably less than that. Just want to echo the yeah. comments of Councillor Clough and to state that I specifically raised the issue of capital value versus fixed levy prior to the vote mm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I make the assumption that when the vote was cast, every councillor had that information. I don't see a need to revisit that item again today. Thank, thank you very much, councillor. That was very brief and to the point. I appreciate that. Uh, councillor Alf Filipina. Uh, thank you, Worship. I just put my time on for four minutes. Um, I will not be taking four minutes. Um, just want to say that everybody around here are environmental. Um, they have environmental concerns. And I was going to uh, put it up at the uh, governing body meeting yesterday if Councillor Fletcher hadn't. Um, because as you know, both uh, Councillor Holtz and I, um, that, that with our committee, it's important. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five things I want to say, Chair, that, and it won't be repeated, um, won't be any rep repetition from Councillor Fletcher. One, the reason why I'm supporting F is if we don't, we will keep our tracks closed uh, for longer periods because there's no money for upgrades in our regional parks. Number two, we won't be supporting 300 community groups. Number three, we won't do pest control in one-third of our ecological areas on the parks. Number four, won't control possums on 50% of our rural areas. And the last point is that we won't control moth plant spread in Hauraki Golf. So you, Your Worship, and, and as um, Councillor Fletcher said, it's around putting it out there for our community to have a say, and this is the, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm supporting F. And Your Worship, lastly, I, I just wanted to pick up on one thing you said um, yesterday, and that is that things will change when we listen to the public. And, and they are when we end up debating it um, in June, July, oh sorry, in June, um, that's exactly where uh, we'll hear from the public and then we'll end up deciding, so finished. Thank you very much, councillor. Thank you all councillors for the brevity. <coughs> uh, I have no further speakers. Uh, oh, sorry, councillor Linda Thank Cooper. You. Um, if members want to support, don't want to support either of these, if you do reconsider, F would be dearest to my heart. Penny Hulse and I um, attended a meeting, a hui last night called by Te Kawarawa Maki. There are at least 80 people there, which is actually big for a community meeting called at short notice. And I think the time is ripe for Aucklanders and New Zealanders, in fact. We're at, we talked about a tipping point for Kari Dieback. We're at a tipping point for the demand from our community to address environmental issues. Absolutely, there's a, there's a high expectation that we play our part, but also communities, and that was demonstrated last night, are very prepared to play their part as well. But what that takes is resources and support from us so that we can all do it together. And um, so the, the groups that um, Councillor Filipina um, spoke about, those are the people, they're ready to go. They want to support these initiatives they absolutely do, but they need the right guidance and support. So for me, this is what this is about, not just council doing everything, but actually we need to ask people if they're pe also prepared to put their money where their mouth is. And their time. And their time, as well as, well as their time, the free time and the expertise they give us, that actually they're willing to put, put their fat hand further deeper in their pocket to get the outcomes that they want for, for our region. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Newman. 
chair briefly, um, you have um, asked for consideration uh, for a public consultation. Um, and you've asked for consideration and we're going to be voting on a number of these things, including ACIL coming up, and you have asked for that on the basis of going out to the public. Um, and I'm prepared to accept that, that, that the public's input is very important. The issue that I have around E and F Roman numeral three is that um, whilst um, the engagement with the public on those matters would be important, um, hand on heart, I don't support a fixed rate and um, I cannot support um, a funding path that I think is actually unfunded at this point. And I take what Councillor Plow said actually, because I have real concern about aspects of this budget, aspects of this budget affecting um, a group of ratepayers in our community who are the least resilient. I'm very anxious about the need to fund the local board initiatives. Um, I don't want to have to make those trade-offs later on uh, because um, we didn't uh, make the toughest decisions actually quite early in order to give ourselves the wriggle room that we are going to require. As much as I want to support the best possible environmental outcome, um, and I am sitting close to uh, Councillor Fletcher, who I, uh, is a real friend uh, to me, and I am not comfortable uh, <laughs> sitting here right now saying this, but hand on heart, I don't support the options. And so I'm not going to put my hand up and say, I will vote for a consultation on matters that I do not support. Um, I'm happy to go and consult on matters where I have uh, more of an open mind, uh, but where I don't have an open mind on these matters, I'm not going to uh, vote for the pretense of an open mind through a consultative process where I have quite a strong position at this point, Mr Chair. Your Worship. Thank, thank, thank you very much, Councillor. We've now had three speakers, four and three against, so I've excluded my speaking rights under my own uh, uh, recommendation at the beginning of the meeting, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to abuse my position as Chair. So um, I intend to put the motion separately, E and F. So I will put motion E first, just so you, you know exactly what you're voting for. By this, division. By, by division, thank you. I'll do it by division. This would extend the consultation to consider a fixed levy for the uh, setting the targeted rates rather than simply the capital value as is currently proposed. So everybody's clear on that. Just want to make sure everybody understands what it's about. <coughs> uh, a division has been moved, so I will ask officers to take the vote on Amendment E. Uh, against. Councillor Casey? No. Deputy Mayor? Against. Councillor Cloy? Against. Councillor Collins? Against. Councillor Cooper? No. Councillor Darby? Against. Councillor Filipina? No. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. Councillor Hill? No, thank you. Councillor Hull? No. <coughs> Councillor Mike Lee? Aye. Councillor Newman? No. Councillor Twack? No, sorry, that's four. <laughs> Councillor Quack? Four. Councillor Sayers? Four. <laughs> Councillor Simpson? Four. Councillor Stewart? Four. Mr John Walker? Four. Councillor Wayne Walker? No. Councillor Watson? No. It's lost 11. Okay, so that vote, that amendment no. is lost 11 to 9. Uh, I'll now put uh, 
by division. Amendment uh, by division. Uh, amendment F, this would add a third option for uh, uh, an increased level of ex expenditure at 356 million. So if you're in favour, um, well, let's just take the vote. Uh, by division, if I can ask officers to call for the vote. Mm -hmm. Mayor Goff. Against. Councillor Casey. Yes. Councillor Deputy Mayor. Against. Councillor Clough. Against. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cooper. For. Councillor Darby. Against. Councillor Filipina. For. Councillor Fletcher. For. Councillor Hill. For. Councillor Holt. Aye. Councillor Mike Lee. Aye. Councillor Newman. Against. Councillor Quax. Against. Councillor Sayers. Against. Councillor Simpson. Against. Councillor Stewart. Against. Sir John Walker. No. Yes. Councillor Wayne Walker. <laughs> Councillor Watson. Lost 11 to 9. Okay, so I declare that amendment lost. We now come to the... the yeah, so, so I need to put the... Yeah, so I'll put the substantive motions, apparently I have to, for E and F. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, aye. no. Carried. Uh, we now come to... The last amendment, which is to reinstate consultation on the disestablishment of ASIL. Now, I'll give people a chance again to, to speak to this if they wish. Uh, if there are no speakers, we'll simply put it to the vote. Question? Uh, question. A question. A question. Yep. A question as well. So, Councillor Darby is the first one with a question. Um, I read in the report that the savings for the, disis with the disis disestablishment, get it out, um, range between. Five hundred thousand and one million dollars a year. Is there a staff member here that can um, uh, speak to that? Is it possible that the savings could be greater or less than? And if they could expand on what the greater might be, and to balance it, the less than. Okay. So, uh, Alistair, you're putting yourself in the hot chair. Would you like to address the answer to that question, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, the total operating expenditure of ASIL is just over a million dollars per annum, so the maximum savings, if you look um, just uh, at the money that ASIL spends, would be at that million dollars. Um, the, um, the lesser figure is that some of those costs incurred through ASIL uh, may <coughs> need to be replicated uh, elsewhere in council if they didn't exist. There would still be audit requirements. Um, there would still be the need for some staff members to um, manage the ownership. And um, ASIL has undertaken work um, uh, as a, for instance, the Ports Board. Um, ASIL did a, a peer review of the capital program that um, Ports was proposing. If ASIL hadn't done that work, then um, the Ports Board, in all likelihood, would have um, commissioned its own independent um, peer review of that work. So th there would be a number of costs that um, um, that wouldn't go away simply by disestablishing ASIL, but it's difficult to put an exact figure on what that would be, which is why we've given that range. <coughs> Of up to a million. Thank you. Yeah. So the savings over a, over the ten year plan would be between five million and uh, certainly no greater than ten million, probably a bit less. Okay. Um, I think I'll just take questions first, and, and then uh, because some people have indicated a desire to ask questions, uh, <coughs> Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. Um, and sorry. Councillor Cooper. Uh, uh, I've got a few yeah. questions, and the first question goes to the relative um, advantage and disadvantage of retaining the ownership in ACIL as compared to an arrangement more directly under 
Council. And that goes to whether or not ACIL is able to enter into some contractual arrangement which might see the loss of um, control of part of the uh, port, for example, the business aspect of it. So I just want to get a handle on the relative advantage of ports being under council as compared to ACIL. Um, I can't think of an arrangement that ACIL could enter into which would in any way diminish um, the sort of control of, of ports versus um, Auckland Council. Was that the question? Sorry, Council. Let me put it another way. Is, is ACIL able to flog off the port's business um, operation without recourse to council? No. 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 Only the council. So we've got a, a high measure of control there. Yes. Independent. Can, can I just, as a supplementary to Councillor Walker's uh, question, say, uh, does that exclude ASIL, or has it excluded ASIL from lobbying for particular positions, for example, the separation of the port, yeah. uh, uh, running the port from the ownership of the port, and for privatisation of it. Um, well, that's what I meant. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> so the difference is they can't do it by themselves, councillor, but they can lobby for that outcome sure. and have. Okay. It's a like fine line between lobbying and advising, but yes, their, their, their role is they can provide um, advice to this council about the best structure for port ownership. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cooper, um, yours was a I question. A oh, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Walker. That's okay. Um, my understanding is that it's possible for us to get some um, advice uh, from various parties, including ports, as to a, a more appropriate um, governance arrangement. How uh, are we advanced in that process, and how far away are we from getting any response? Governance, sorry, I'm to, yeah. to replace ASIL. Turn it. Um, at, at present, the, the <coughs> proposal is the, the governance arrangements would be council would direct the own owner of ports. Uh, I think what is suggested in the proposal is that due to the port's um, legislative requirement to act as a successful business, that it might be prudent to put in place um, some form of memorandum of understanding or other such mechanism between council and ports, if that's what you decided to do, um, to govern how that relationship would work to ensure that there would be um, um, less short-term political thinking guiding the ports and, and allow them to operate as a um, commercial entity. So the follow-on question from that is is around um, council receiving advice on that before we make a decision and as to whether um, as to how far off that might be and what the immediacy of our decision is a any decision um, as with all the decisions in the LTP um, won't happen until Mayish next year um, post consultation. So today's decisions are simply, and to state the obvious, um, what you want to consult on. Uh, any decisions about um, uh, the future of ACIL and the ports and what mechanisms could be put in place, um, information could be provided for that at the final decision making meetings in May or June next year. Okay. They are. So my question goes to the information that's provided to us and to the people of Auckland to inform their submissions through the long-term plan process and the desirability of that information around the governance arrangements and how speedily we can have that information so it informs the consultation process. Um, partly look to my finance colleagues here, but I understand that the information that's um, being prepared um, for the report has been through audit, which is desperately looking at Ross, sorry. <laughs> Ross, would you like to address the answer to that? Um, yes, so we, we have shared the, the information, we've shared a draft consultation document and the papers that you had, the options paper that relates to ACL, we've shared that with audit. Audit have provided some preliminary information on the 
consultation document haven't raised any issues about whether there's any um, missing information. They haven't yet sort of given us a firm view on one way or the other on that underlying paper yet, but we'll, we'll be expecting that for the you know, next week or so for an audit. So, I mean, I guess our, our view at the moment, we've had no indication from audit that there's anything incomplete or missing from that information. <coughs> we'll have a firm view a bit later on. Okay, so I'm just trying to distill that answer. So am I to take it then that the information I'm referring to is going to be available and is going to be available soon so it can inform the consultation process? Um, I think what the answer was is that the information that is already there, audit have not indicated that it's inadequate. If you want that additional information, um, we can work that up, whether that's necessary um, or desirable for the audit process, what has been prepared there is essentially um, a list of the pros and cons of um, um, disestablishing ACIL without coming to a firm view on it. Um, it lists some of um, um, the potential risks and some of the potential benefits and ways of mitigating those risks. I guess my advice to you is that um, um, you would be able to put in place what I think would be uh, an adequate and appropriate <laughs> memorandum of understanding between us and ports um, to allow that relationship to be governed appropriately. Okay, through, through you, Mr. Chair, I wasn't seeking the information to um, support the requirements or otherwise of the audit department. I was seeking the information for our decision making mm -hmm. and to inform the consultation process. So, so sorry. And my question is. How soon are we going to have that information to support that process as compared to the audit process? Um, I can't give you a definitive answer on that because uh, we would need to work with ports um, to come up with something there. Ports have been offered um, the opportunity to um, put together something that they think <coughs> would be acceptable, but I can't control the speed which that happens. So my follow-on question is, do we have the ability to delay a decision around this until such time as we have that information and are able to provide it to the public of Auckland for the consultation process? If you want to um, consult as part of this year's LTP, we don't have a lot of time to play with. I think we discussed this yesterday on another item. Um, if you want to hit the targeted um, consultation mm -hmm. dates, um, we have a very short period of time to get together all the necessary information. So my question is, how much time? We're going to be coming back in February to determine matters for consultation. Is it possible to defer this specific item until that point, so that we've got the information I'm describing. Um, that's more of a process question around the LTP, and I'm not sure I'm best placed to answer that. Um, yeah. okay, so we, we are in the very tight time frames for um, the audit review. We, at the Audit and Risk Committee uh, last week, we had the Audit New Zealand and the Deputy Auditor General present, and they gave us sort of a clear message there can be no further slippage in, in timelines. Um, so we're kind of trying very hard to meet those timelines. I guess our, our view is the information in front of you is sufficient for consultation and for initial decision making and until audit give us a steer otherwise. We, we think everything's sufficient. I guess at the end of the day you, you, you have to make your own decisions about is the information in front of you adequate for decisions that you make. So. Okay, can I just ask a follow-up question to that? Um, just to clarify that the ports themselves have been invited to participate fully in the process of setting in place a governance structure that would protect it against political interference into commercial management uh, in, in the same way as ACEL was probably initially intended to do, but a, a, at a, a lower cost and without the need for the, the current structure. The ports have received that invitation and I presume have accepted it? Um, they've received that invitation. They've been asked um, to participate in the drafting of a, a memorandum of, of yep. understanding. We've asked for feedback on, on what other measures that we could put in place that would, would help. 
And, and secondly, my question is, as a key stakeholder in this decision, uh, would you expect them to participate fully in the consultation process and put forward the arguments and requirements that they believe they need in order to protect themselves adequately against uh, undue interference in commercial decision making? I suspect you'd struggle to stop them participating. <laughs> that's, that's precisely right. Uh, Councillor uh, Cooper. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, this is a really difficult position because for me this is a, a bit like um, someone in Christchurch saying, oh, I think I'll give up my insurance because it's a bit dear. Um, knowing there's a risk, <coughs> uh, you know, this isn't just about money for me. It, it's about what's the insurance. And I'm not comfortable that I've got another, you know, I mean, if you don't like your insurance, you change your insurance company. You don't get rid of your insurance. But I don't know what insurance company we're moving to because we still haven't got a mechanism outlined and that concerns me. But also, and just, oh gosh, Wayne's got no Wayne. I'm gonna support you. Wayne, so Councillor Walker. Um, you know, when he talks about enough information for the public, I think there's a lot more behind this, even that councillors are not sure of and that's what concerns me. I just think, you know, we've got a bland line there um, <coughs> and we're, we're paying lip service, we've got to consult, but I don't know really if it's meaty enough for people. Um, so it does, it does concern me. Um, I guess, my, well, I think some of the questions have been asked there, but I still, <coughs> you know, I think we've got the right mechanism, but is it the right, you know, is it the right team, I don't know. Those are the things that concern me that I haven't had answered and only with sort of background conversations and I'm just, that's why I struggle with this. I, I don't feel fully reassured that it's the right thing to do. Um, I guess if we can be guaranteed that at the time we go out to, when we sign off the consultation document, we've got good information and that the full reasons why we would change were there I'd be a bit more comforted, but I'm still struggling with my decision on this one. Thank you. Um, did you have any comment that you'd like like to make? I mean, it's sort of a bit on the back of the last yeah, questions, yeah, but it's yeah. still. I'm, I mean, the real the real question, I, I guess. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Cooper. Uh, you started off talking about insurance. What insurance would we be able to put in place to make sure? that there was not improper interference in the courts. Is that is Because I just question? also want to touch on the question is, because now we would be appointing the directors. Not and necessarily. Well, I just want to be sure about that, because what I'm concerned about is we've had some recent appointments that seem to me cl clearly political, you know, friends of friends, and I don't like that. I don't like that just popping up. Friends of it friends? doesn't feel like, no idea. it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like we might have used the process that we've been using that's worked really well. At Amalgamation, we had half appointed by the Mayor and half appointed by the Government. We moved into a really good situation where we had um, the people appointing were the company we employed, the CEO, two councillors, and the chairman of whatever board that was. And I felt that was a good spread. And I want to make sure that we continue in that light, not just people popping out out of nowhere and I, I don't I don't like what's happened in the last little but while and I want to be and I want to be of order Mr Chair this friends of friends business can I get some I want, kind of explanation I want to be point of order Mr Chair sorry, I, 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 I would like to know there is a point of order there is a point of order is I would like clarification could I have some order please could I why don't you tell me a point order councillor both councillors please there is a point of order. When there's a point of yes. order, there'll be silence while it's heard. I would like clarification on understanding who the friends of friends are and what that attack is on in particular. Not attacking yeah. um, I, I think that, so that, that is a political point. Um, uh, I, I'm going to go back to Councillor. Let, we're trying to get an answer to your question, yeah. Councillor. But that's I'm genuinely trying to get that answer. Yeah. So can I put to our two officials, what are the assurances that are or could be put in place to provide proper protection <coughs> against uh, a, a political interference that's undue or un, 
uh, uh, unwise in the port's activities. Um, look, if I just run through the headline sort of um, roles that council will play in relation to ports if you went down the role of direct ownership. First of all is the director appointment process. Now, currently those um, decisions are made, um, as you know, by the Appointments and Performance Review Committee. Um, I have a slightly uh, vested view in my next statement, given that it's our team that manages it, but I'd like to think that it's a rather robust and independent process which provides advice um, to that committee to get the best candidates for those roles. So we would be looking to get strong commercial directors appointed to that board where a committee is signed off, there's not one person just appointing directors to there. To add to that, and look, I'm not saying this is a good idea or a bad idea, you could also look at a mechanism whereby um, the, the port board itself um, may appoint um, a number of the directors on that board um, so that you remove that even further um, from potential political interference. That would be a decision that you collectively would have to make as to whether that was a good idea. Point of order, Mr. Thank Chair. you. Thank you. Point of order. I don't think you dealt with um, the issue that Councillor Collins raised and I would like to raise too. Uh, words were spoken by Councillor Cooper with regard to her appointments process. She alleged friends of friends were appointed and I, I think that's a slight on our appointments process and I would like the words withdrawn or I'd like them inserted into the minutes under my right understanding orders, which is called taking down the words if she doesn't withdraw them and apologise. Well, I, I, I would like Councillor Cooper just to reflect on those, please, because um, uh, Alistair Cameron uh, has indicated there is a process that's followed. There's a number of members on the appointments process here generally those appointments, uh, I think, are made by consensus or overwhelming majority. And I've just, uh, I'm seeing nods around the table. So, Councillor Cooper, I, I'm not sure what you had in mind, but I can assure you that when the Appointments and uh, Performance Committee meets, we have a robust discussion. Nobody is closed down. People are free to express their point of view. Um, we hear advice from our officials. We hear advice from the the professional recruiters, and generally it's done by consensus. Uh, uh, maybe you could comment on that, Alistair. Yeah, uh, probably the only other thing that I, I'd add to that, yes, we do have um, a professional uh, recruitment firm who um, helps us both identify the skills that we require on the board and also um, source uh, potential candidates. And in every single process um, that we have, the, the chair of the relevant board is heavily involved in um, the shortlisting and the interview process. So, um, look, I, yep. I, I hope I, that it's a, a robust process. Um, that's certainly our intention. And, and, and Councillor, if I could just give you another reassurance that you are welcome to attend any of those meetings, as indeed Councillor Casey does regularly. Nobody is excluded so from that process. I was not slurring our staff at all because I think they run a very good process. But as we know, in the end it's a political decision. So there's no slurring on it. Withdrawal on apology, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. A withdrawal on an apology I or I'd like it inserted in I the won't. minutes. You can insert it in the minutes. I'm not going to withdraw and apologise. But I would I like, Mr. Chairman, I would like the the opportunity to finish what I say, I was saying. Point I have of no order. I've I raised I've the point of order. A point of order has been raised. Uh, Councillor Clough has the floor. Please quiet everybody else. Councillor Casey raised a valid point of order. If the words aren't withdrawn, they are written down and put into the minutes. And I want, that needs a ruling. It's in the, it's in the standing order. Yeah, the, the councillor has uh, has declined to withdraw those comments. Uh, I can't force her to withdraw those comments. I don't agree with them. Other councillors that sit on that committee don't agree with them. And I think we should just leave it at that. Okay, they, they were political comments, um, but we, we can't be obliged to So uh, then I would like the, the record searched at the end of this meeting for the words used by Councillor Cooper to be inserted into the minutes, as is my you, right. You Thank have, you very you, much. You, you, I think you have that right understanding orders and that will happen. Yep. Uh, okay, I want, to, I want to get back to the, the uh, order uh, of uh, Councillor Quack. So questions at this stage, Councillor? Yeah, yes, that's, yep. that's right, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, can, in terms of um, 
the dividends that have been returned. Uh, can you tell me in the last five years what that has been, Alison? I don't have that uh, on the top of my head. They've, they've been increasing um, steadily from off the top of my head. We can find out that information. Um, sorry, I'll just look desperately for one of my finance yeah. colleagues again. <coughs> who isn't here, um, <laughs> but um, my understanding is it's um, been increasing. Ella, would you be able to find that information, please? We, we might come back to your question if we yeah. can find an answer okay. to it, Councillor. Have you got other yeah, questions? Got yeah, well, yeah, I... Um, and that's Fort Sandy. Ever, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just ones I don't know the answer to, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask the question, you didn't ask the question, Alison, I did. Um, do you, are you aware of what the dividend return to council were in the five years prior to the establishment of ACIL? Uh, I am aware that it was less than what we're currently receiving. Right. Maybe I could, uh, well, I'll, or maybe I'll save it for my, uh, my comments later okay, on. Okay, that's anyway. good. Um, further questions? Uh, I've got Councillor Fletcher question at this stage. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Alistair, you've, you've been with the council in this area working for a long time. Can you tell me in terms of performance um, in the reviews that you've undertaken with ICEL, have, have there been any matters that you have drawn to council's attention? Put my best diplomatic face on here. Um, no, um, and I think the, the one issue of concern that we've had um, over um, ACIL's performance was perhaps um, during the last ports dispute where I think in ACIL's defence we weren't clear with them as to what we expected them to do for us. So other than that period back in, was it 2011, 2012? At, during the port dispute, there have been no matters of non-performance by the ACIL board. Um, none, none significant enough to, to bring to the attention of um, um, the governing body. I think it's fair to say that um, they have achieved their financial targets, which is their primary performance measures that we have set for them, and um, they have achieved those targets. I think every year since um, since establishment. Okay, thank you. Councillor, Councillor Newman, last question from Councillor Newman. Just a comment. Oh, yeah, big question. Fine, so um, we'll now move in. We'll apply the same standing order as we did last time to discussion. Sorry, sorry Mr. Mayor, I, I had my hand up. Oh, sorry, you, you did too, yeah. Councillor Watson. I'm sorry. Councillor Watson. Is that okay? Yeah, no. Um, uh, it was just following up on one of the comments that was made um, um, earlier in some of the questions um, with respect of um, ACIL <coughs> lobbying um, people, I assume, um, for the separation of the, the port business and the land. Do, do we know, who, A, how do we know it, and B, who, who were the people being lobbied? I'm, I'm just curious to know. And they weren't lobbying me, so it's beyond my um, knowledge. I, I was one, councillor, uh, uh, but I think other council officials could attest to the fact that that was the view of ACIL, and uh, actually I think probably when this went to committee, I think probably two years ago, um, I wasn't there, so I don't know what happened, but the, 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 the suggestion was first mooted at that, uh, at that meeting of, of the separation. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, just in terms of clarification, um, I would not want it interpreted that I, I can say, um, hand on heart, I have never been lobbied by ACIL. Well My own view on separation is one that I have held since 2010 and have used every occasion that we've had an LTP to okay, try and discuss. You. So I'm not aware of any lobbying um, and I just, I find that suggestion um, perplexing. Uh, Indeed. Um, whether that's the role of ASIL or not is uh, a matter councillors will have to determine. Right, we're now coming to uh, uh, comments on it, and I first recognise Councillor Newman. Comments? Uh, Chair, look, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit 
I'll just sitting out here, a bit independent of some of this conversation and debate that I've, um, that's been going on. But to me, um, the options for the governance and the disestablishment of ACIL um, cannot be done in isolation, in total isolation of the matters that were raised by Christine Fletcher yesterday. Um, and that debate, um, you know, I've made some comments about that, but the matters raised by Council Fletcher, uh, including uh, possible divestment, um, cannot go, um, they, they, it can't be left without some sort of address in this term. Um, we have to land the debate around this matter. The Upper North Island Port Study is a live issue. Um, we will have this issue landed on us if we are passive observers of it without getting involved. I cannot see how we could um, consider the future of ACIL um, as a CCO informing um, our governance and ownership um, of, of our governance of, of the ports of Auckland in particular um, without addressing the matters that were raised by Councillor Fletcher yesterday. Now, I happen to think that um, the divestment option is not the right one, um, but I have sympathy for the, the, uh, the, the question being addressed. So for me, um, if the matter of ACIL is a way to further advance the conversation around that, then I'm not opposed to it. Um, the shareholding in the um, Auckland International Airport Limited, um, look, I, you know, I was talking to David Collings down the back there, the chair of the Howick Local Board, and just trying to get some recollection, because I did spend a short time at Manukau, um, which actually not only um, owned shares in um, Auckland International Airport Limited, but bought additional shares. Um, the ownership model that Manukau had did not um, necessitate a whole lot of political interference. Um, but of course, part of the issue there at Auckland International Airport Limited is its, is its ownership structure, which is different from the ports of Auckland. Um, <coughs> I think that with respect to the dividend, Mr Chair, uh, Your Worship, um, the dividend alone is not a measure of success. It is one of the measures of success. You could argue, frankly, Your Worship, that um, we should take less dividends and allow for funded capitalisation of the asset. Um, that's an entirely reasonable proposition to take. Um, I don't look at the ownership of those particular entities as a means of supplementing annual revenue for the purpose of trying to hold down um, rate increases. Yes, it's nice to be able to do so, but ownership means that you've got to take into account a balance of considerations as to what is the appropriate measure for um, those particular companies. But that's a little bit wider of this debate, Mr Chair. Um, uh, if, the, if the view of, of people around this table is that um, there needs to be a consideration um, of the model of, of, of um, uh, governance through a CCO, uh, then, then I'm not opposed to that. But what I would say is that concurrent to that, we need to start the conversation around the matters that Councillor Fletcher raised yesterday, which cannot be kicked to the weeds simply because they are difficult, they are relevant, they are germane to this, and if we don't get involved in that conversation, it will happen to us sooner rather than later through the Upper North Island uh, Port Study, which is sponsored by the Crown. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Quacks. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, first of all, let me just say that uh, uh, I haven't been lobbied by ACIL. Harbour, Harbour. I haven't been lobbied by anybody on this. Um, but I think my, my views on it uh, have been, have been uh, uh, well known that the separation, um, as we have it at the moment, has worked extremely well for us. And uh, questions that I asked uh, in regards to um, the dividends, 
Um, <clears throat> before the establishment of ACIL, um, in the five years before the establishment of ACIL, the dividends uh, amounted to $95 million. In the last five years, the dividends are for $243 million. Say again. $243 million. Quarter of a billion. So close to a quarter of a billion dollars over the last five years. So that's significant. And I don't think anyone should ignore that kind of return. Um, and and I, in fact, it would be um, irresponsible of us to ignore that kind of return. I'm also concerned, Mr. Chairman, um, about the consultation process here. Because consultation means really, uh, we'll consult with you, but we may not necessarily um, go with, um, we may not necessarily agree with you, and we'll do what we want to do anyway. And we've seen that lots of times in local government. It's not new at all. It's uh, something that uh, occurs all the time. And I, was, and I was alerted to this fact yesterday that I think that the process uh, of consultation will be totally, uh, if it doesn't go the way of the disestablishment uh, of ACIL, will be totally ignored. <coughs> yesterday, immediately after the vote was taken, after the Finance and Performance Committee, I was rounded on by one of the council officials who said to me, you've made a mistake. You've made a mistake in the way you voted. That doesn't seem to me to be some, a council official who was prepared, provide, prepared to provide us with neutral and timely advice and have an open mind on this. Here, here. Mm. I was, I'm terribly concerned <laughs> about that kind of political interference by a council official. And it, and it yeah, says to me, the mind has been made up. The council, the council <laughs> mind has been made up on how we should go on. Point this. of order, Mr. Chairman. Uh, point of order, Councillor Casey. Just want to make sure that Councillor Quacks has actually put that through the complaint system. Sorry? <coughs> Just to make sure through the chair that Councillor Quacks has made a complaint about that al altercation. Well, that's it's only been, it was only overnight, and I'm quite happy to tell you who the official was, if uh, you like. Okay, uh, look, um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's helpful to continue that down that line. Um, we actually lobbying, we do ahead. want free and frank advice from our officials informally. We get it all the time, okay? Um, nobody makes a decision for us, Councillor. We are, the we are the body that makes the decision after consultation whether we want to go this way or that way. That's our role. We're elected representatives. That's not the officials' role. Their role is to give us free and frank advice, and I hope they continue to do it. Ab Please abs continue. Absolutely, and I absolutely agree with you. But in the in the time that I have been on local government, including the Manukau Council, City Council, and this council, I have never been rounded on in that manner by a council official uh, to basically tell me you've made a mistake. You made the wrong decision. And so that, that is different from what you're describing there, Mr. Mayor, I'm afraid. So um, I will not be voting for this. I will, will remain staunch with what I did yesterday. I think we made, the wrong, we made the right decision yesterday. I'm sorry to see it's come back. Um, but I will not be changing my vote on this. And I hope that the councillors who voted uh, the way they did yesterday will continue to hold the line on this because this is too important to give a successful commercial organisation over success to the political whims of this council. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor John Watson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I understand the, the way in which this uh, amendment has been framed, essentially, that ACIL um, is adding you know, little or no value and that we would 
we'll be saving money if we, we disestablish them. Um, uh, I'm sort of very uh, quickly getting the feeling there's a bit more um, to this than, than, than just that, and that, um, that disturbs me both ways. I mean, I, I uh, did vote against this yesterday, and I voted against it entirely on the basis of uh, what happened to the diversified assets portfolio when it, when it came to council uh, and what has hap happened to it since, i.e. $330 million ha has gone in a little over 12 months. That, um, that concern wasn't allayed any when I talked to a, a managed uh, funds specialist uh, yesterday evening who, who told me how <laughs> managed funds have done in the period since the $330 million have disappeared. Um, the Fisher funds, for instance, were returning 16%. The middle of the road balance portfolio, international shares, 30%. Property and infrastructure, 24%. New Zealand growth fund, 18%. Australian growth, 30%, and so on and so forth. Milford Asset Management had pretty much the same figures. By the calculation of um, this managed fund specialist, the return to, to council um, over that time would have been about 50 million uh, before tax. Now, um, I know that uh, a number of people, not least of which was Councillor Lee, brought that up very strongly at the time um, and uh, obviously wasn't supported by enough councillors or else, you know, our financial position might have been a little more cheerier than, than, it, than it is if we'd had. And, and my understanding is it's predicted that that, that uh, financial climate is set to continue for a couple more years yet, so uh, there, there has been a significant <coughs> cost there. Um, so that, that guided my, my vote, Mr Mayor. That was entirely over the way that matter has been handled and disposed of. Um, it's like the little green bottle sitting on a wall. That one's gone and there's two left now, uh, you know, and what one is <laughs> the, the port company and, and the other one um, the, the airport shares, and, and I must admit my, my concern now is, is, is focused largely around uh, the port business and uh, the protection of that and to avoid a separation, which I uh, would anticipate being a, a similarly detrimental line <coughs> financially going down, as was the case with the diversified assets portfolio. So what I'm interested in, and which I suspect I haven't got the full story, but there, there have been a number of things said, is protecting those assets um, and uh, whether that's ACIL or the council parent, um, not really sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Fletcher. Well, well, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. My interest um, in ACIL is, is not just in the port, um, it's not just in the airport shares, it's also in the stewardship that they've shown for the film studios, which uh, had some period of controversy. And I watched um, the skillful way in which they brought a strong commercial focus to the ownership and the governance of those assets. And hence my questions to the officials here today is, uh, whether or not they had erred at any point um, in terms of the discharging of their obligations. Like Councillor Lee, I've been bitterly disappointed at the diversified assets portfolio. Councillor Lee and I are both well aware, and uh, I resigned as a Minister of the Crown to sit on the back bench to kill the only government bill in history um, to preserve those assets for the people of Auckland because back those years ago, 20 plus years ago, it was apparent to me that we would need seeding funds to get the infrastructure that Auckland requires, and we all now have documented to death. Um, but we have frittered away those funds, and I feel that that has been a measure of significant disappointment to me. I believe that ACIL, um, if they had not performed when uh, Councillor Hulse undertook the CCO review, um, they would have been for the firing line at that stage. So I, I feel that there is some politicisation taking place at this point that I am distinctly uncomfortable with. And like Councillor Quacks, I too was lobbied for the first time by any officer ever in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lobbied yesterday over the decision which gave me even more discomfort. For me, 
we've got a really important <coughs> role as governors. Um, I think we've got to look responsibly at the, the assets that we have, but we do require, um, we, we require good process. And you gave me a berating yesterday because there wasn't sufficient process. And I'm prepared to put my hand up and say, of course you shouldn't make a decision unless you've got a good business case um, being put before you. But my frustration yesterday is that I've been suppressed um, at times when I've asked for that business case. I didn't particularly have a strong view on, on you know, the vote yesterday. What I was pleased about is that it aired the issues and it aired the issues before we took the decision um, which the Finance Committee took yesterday. We have the power, you know, in terms of the statement of intent, those things that we can use with, with our CCOs, we have the power to do a, an awful lot. And, you know, I'm, I am feeling quite frustrated because ACIL um, have actually acted um, as I think very responsible managers and the advice they've given us over the airport shares, they've, they, they have not let us down in terms of performance on any occasion, whereas it, it could be argued that, you know, if you take the diversified assets, um, um, we may, as Councillor Watson has said, I, I don't want to labour it and I don't want to have any implied criticism of any of our um, finance staff, but to me, if something is worthy of protection, you, you have the governance structures that we have. If we're going to have another review, as was undertaken by Councillor Hulse in the last term of Council, of CCOs, let's do it. And let's have a review about the way we do our appointments. Um, officers are, are well aware of my interest in ensuring that we actually have clear briefs that we adhere to when we actually make appointments of directors. That, that we are acting in a professional way and we have professional advice. Um, that is what we have had from ACIL. And I find it distasteful today that this issue has been so politicised um, for people who have served us well over the years since amalgamation in 2010 and that somehow there is this innuendo that they they haven't served us well and we can save a bit of money on the way through and, and all will be jolly. Right. Well, I don't think it will <coughs> be jolly. Right. I, I, I don't have the same measure of comfort. I feel passionately about the retention of the airport shares. Um, I, I won't have that same measure of comfort if we suddenly bring those back into Treasury. I, I, I feel very uncomfortable with today and I'm going to stick with the vote that I <coughs> took yesterday. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah. Deputy you. Mayor. Bill oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So having listened to the conversations, there's a, a few points of truth here. One is that is integrity is the most important word that's needed around this table in our organisation. Point of order. Ports. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. The innuendo order. is that there have been some untruths said, and if there are, I would like to know what those untruths are. I, I'm sorry, Councillor, I didn't take that inference at all, that the, the comment was even directed towards you. It was no, it a, a general comment that we need integrity yeah. not around just me, it. but others. So I'm sure the Councillor was not reflecting no, on not you, Councillor, and I didn't take it as such. Um, but maybe, Councillor, you can give that assurance um, and we can move on. I carry on. So we need to have the decision-making processes that are sound and, and, good, and, and of good purpose. And by integrity, I mean exactly that. And when we talk about the ports, and this is a critical business that's built up over centuries, and it's changed. And it will probably change more in the coming centuries, for sure. And if things can't be given an ability to move forward in different ways, then we won't get the best outcomes we possibly can. Now, people have talked about the diversified asset portfolio and the airport shares. The diversified asset portfolio was hardly frittered away. It was put into our program debt reduction so we could do more things build more bridges, build more roads, build more rail, build more cycleways and so forth. The ports will face challenges as the time goes forward. We are a growing economy. We are a growing city. The future port study talked about capacity timings. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on that, on ports businesses, but there are people out there who are. What, Mr Mayor, I suggest and councillors, what we do need is a very close and collaborative relationship with the Ports Board 
and its management with the management and the governance of this council. We need to have a joined up direction, a joined up pathway that is going to deliver the best for the city and indeed for the country. We are going to have a port strategy for the upper part of the North Island with its North Port and Auckland or whether it's the three big ports. We need to have a good, clean workway to achieve a good result through that study that we understand how the ports can move in the future and whether that's an OPCO land code deal or whether it's some other form of business structure, I don't know and I don't think any of us know because we have to do the work before we can have the understanding. So Mr Chair, I would suggest that the ACIL part of this is really at this point in time a place we can move on from. We can add some value, it's not huge, but most importantly we can add a better collaborative understanding between the two organisations that are so important for the city. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Mike Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I didn't expect to be debating this again, but um, it's all for the good, I think, um, because more points have come out uh, this morning than were raised yesterday. And I have to say that the full picture of what is motivating these recommendations um, is not quite clear, um, but we're getting um, a better idea uh, about it. The stated reason, of course, was we could save costs by um, disestablishing this particular CCO. Um, when I look at the costs of this council, which have featured in the news media in the last six weeks, for instance, the three, nearly $3 million per annum extra um, we are paying because of the bond sale in London, for instance, which is of subject to lively discussion in the National Business Re Review and uh, commented on by the lo local government funding organisation. Um, then there's the uh, 42 million unbudgeted uh, staff um, cost blowout and, and, and then the other thing, the routine 46 million on cons um, and 70 million per year on IT staff um, salary. So the um, hope for savings by uh, uh, abolishing uh, ACIL um, is not the only reason. That's, that's clear um, uh, fr from what has come out this morning. I was told yesterday by the Mayor that ACIL has been lobbying, lobbying to sell the port of Auckland. Yep. Dear me. Correct. Um, that's easily sorted, um, the, the, but I would like some evidence because they haven't lobbied me, I haven't lobbied me. And, and, no one, me. and no one in the room seems to have Except been lobbied, but um, if the mayor's been lobbied, well, um, he's a grown up, I'm sure he's, and one thing that is undeniable, he's very experienced in politics, so I'm sure he, c he can handle that without having to di disestablish a whole CCO. Um, <coughs> but it's interesting because the previous directors of ACIL, they didn't lobby in regard to the diversified fund assets. They gave us formal considered advice and that is uh, keep it in ACIL uh, because they feared that if it went to council treasury it would get spent down and their advice proved to be correct. Unfortunately, we lost those directors and they were replaced by directors, um, I guess, more attuned to the council's philosophy. Um, so are, are you surprised they want to sell stuff? Um, because I, I would guess that's one of the reasons um, they replaced the people who didn't want to sell stuff, the previous directors of ACIL. Um, if there is concern about um, ACIL or the directors cr crossing a line, then I, I suggest the mayor writes a stern letter um, and warns them about this. But I've seen no proof, so I almost, um, I have to say I'm sorry to have to mention it, but it was mentioned to me. Um, the other concern I have is, just like uh, Councillor um, um, uh, Watson, 
is that we can only go on the evidence of what's happened here in the recent past. The transfer of those $325 million investments to the Council Treasury and their liquidation in, in very short order. And at the same time, not only did we get through $325 million, but our debt actually went up on top of that by another $486 million. That's enormous. Um, and that is a real worry. And so there's going to be great pressure on the Council to come up with extra uh, money, extra revenue. And the temptation uh, to, to sell off shares of uh, airport or the port um, will be very strong, one imagined, on the evidence we've seen. Now, what I, I'm concerned about the Council's direct control over these assets is the cursory approach to the special consultative procedure, mm. section 83, but also section 93, uh, this, the consultation that goes round goes with an annual plan and a long-term plan in which this council on two occasions... Coun Councillor, your time has expired. If you need an extension I of time, okay. I suggest you seek it. I'll, I'll be very quick, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, uh, we have excluded formally the right of Aucklanders to come along and make a submission unless they're considered by council management a key stakeholder. L if you want to review ACIL and the Port Board and all the rest of it and try and make it better, I'm all for that. I think we should look at all the CCOs and if you ask the public what okay. CCO they would like review, or disestablished even, I think they would say Auckland Transport, but you, I, I guess this council won't go there. Thank you. I, I will be voting against um, the recommendation. Thank you, um, I'm the next speaker on the list, but I'll just reserve that to my right of reply. I've got three speakers, and I'd like to conclude with those. Not every speaker has indicated quite clearly where they intend to vote, so it's been hard to enforce a three for, three against rule. Uh, Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. Um, I've, I've listened to the debate here with an open mind and also the uh, questions that have been raised. Yeah. The concern that I've got is that there are at least two issues here and they're bound up. One of which is the change to the arrangement around ports. That's one issue. The second issue is a structural issue and that is around eliminating ACIL, Auckland Council Investments Limited. And effectively that eliminates a source of contestable advice and especially a form of advice that advises us around investments. And quite obviously, I would suggest to councillors, if there's an area that this council needs advice, Absolutely. needs contestable advice and desirably some advice in-house, it is around investments, of which this council has a considerable amount. It has investments, obviously, under the portfolio of ACIL, but equally it has investments in the form of Panuku, water care and elsewhere. If, as Councillor Lee points out, we look at the recent history of ACIL, the fund that was liquidated, it's quite clear that we're, we have lost 52, maybe more million dollars. Let's take off that, the cost of interest, say 20 million. We've effectively lost 30 million dollars in a period where the planets have been aligned around low interest rates, high return, and very low inflation. So why would you have done that? And I raised this issue at the time when we were going to liquidate this fund and other councillors raised this issue, I put real question marks over the advice that we have received. I think there's an issue around what expertise, what advice there is within council as it stands around investment without something like ACIL. We know that the dividend that we're receiving from ports from Air New Zealand and 
woe is me, had we retained the diversified fund, would have been considerable. And we know that that goes to the ability of council to raise money and borrow, and we know that we're better under that circumstance than flogging them off. <coughs> so coming back to my conclusion, and that is based around what I've heard around this table, and also the commentary on the part of staff, officers, that yes, the ports are secured under the present uh, arrangement. My view is to stay with the vote that we had and to retain the ACIL. And I'm mindful that it might be in the interest of council in the future to actually increase assets that we might have under ACIL as other successful councils in New Zealand have done. Yep. And I could describe a number of them. And also cities overseas that have been very successful because they have funds that generate more than would otherwise be the case and more than the cost of borrowing, which is at historic low levels, and enables their constituents, the people of Auckland, to go forward in better health. So I stick with my vote and I would urge other councillors to back that position because I think even looking in hindsight it was the right decision to make for Auckland. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ross Clay. <coughs> Maybe I didn't sleep very well last night but I'm a bit confused to be quite honest. Um, evidently ACIL have been lobbying councillors in order to get them to support to promote, point, point of to order. sell the point of port, order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. to sell the port. That is, that is specul that is speculation. Quakes. And it, it's a wild speculation on the part of the council. Is uh, that's not a point of order, councillor. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a debating point. Uh, councillor Clough. So I've been hearing how they've been lobbying and want to sell the port. And then what I'm hearing around the table here is all those that don't want to sell the port say we want to keep that board because they're trying to sell the port. So it's catch-22, I'm not quite sure where the heck this is going. And I don't know what one councillor had for dinner last night, but yesterday she was promoting that we split the port from the land and, and there was a very strong thing. And now it's almost like I forgot what I took, spoke about yesterday. And obviously I'm referring to you, Councillor Fletcher, because I can't quite understand. This resolution just opens up the discussion, consultation, and get the feedback as to whether we want to Let's try and save some money, but one of the issues is do we think we might have more control over the port ourselves and therefore maybe stop any sale of port or any separating of land from, from the business? So I'm just a little bit confused from where some councillors are coming from because it seems as though they're supporting the group that want to do exactly what they don't want to have happen. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, last speaker, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I'm just following on from my comments before. Um, really, for me, if we have a new mechanism, if if this goes out to consultation and if the community agree, then for me, what's most important is that we have re reassurance that directors are appointed to the brief of the appointments and performance panel. That's what's most important to me, that we have a process that it is followed because we can't have one process for one, lots of applicants and not for the others. And I think well, that's well, really... Well, Mr. Chairman, no, this is the same, no, it this isn't. Is the same criticism uh, she made uh, earlier. No, 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 no sorry, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no. I'm ruling against the point of order. The councillor is entitled sorry. to raise that as a I'm point of view. Yep. She is not making any reflection on anyone. She's asking that the process be followed. That's yes, legitimate. Yes, that's what I'm that. asking, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And so for me, oh. um, I suppose when I look at it and, and the things that I've said in the last couple of days around choice, about things being able to go out to consultation. Um, I will support this to go out to consultation, but that unless I get a lot more reassurance at the time that the consultation document goes out and when the feedback comes in, I'll still have an open mind on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. Um, Sorry, yeah, I haven't spoken. Councillor Darby, you haven't spoken. 
Mr. Mayor, was that an amendment or was that a motion in its own right? That, that is uh, effectively to add to the consultation document something that we took out of the consultation document yesterday. So it's a motion in its own right? It's part, it's part it's, of the motion. It's not an amendment? No. So I haven't spoken, and, but I just want clarification. Yep. Um, not many speakers have referred to the attachment G. G outlines some yep. options. If, question of uh, staff, if that motion was to go through and we went to consultation, we would be consulting on the various options? Yep, that's correct. correct. Yep. Yes. And one of those options is status quo. Mm -hmm. Yep, yes. yes. So that's if we go out to consultation, to be clear, I want this is a question, not a debating point, we are actually um, talking about, we're asking our citizens to also consider the status quo. Yep. yep, yes. So if that is the case, why can't the H be retention or disestablishment? I think for the purpose of what the motion uh, is trying to do, yes. For or against? Yeah. Or um, for disestablishment. My proposal is to disestablish, but an alternative to that is to retain it, and that's what we'll be consulting uh, about. But I'm, I'm if, if, it, if, it, if there wasn't any thought of disestablishing it, it wouldn't go out to consultation. But that does not in any way inhibit people saying, uh, and, and I include myself in this, I'm going to listen to the debate, uh, I'm going to listen to the pros and cons, I'm going to seek the information that this consultation process will provide, and, and I have an open enough mind to say, actually, I think I was wrong about that. So. In effect, yes, this is an option to disestablish. We're consulting on. Others will come forward, as they've done around this table, and say, no, we want to do this, and give their arguments. And, and I think all of us should be in listening mode to those arguments. Well, thanks, Mr Chair, because I think it's important to highlight here that even though the motion then stays as disestablishment, what we're asking for from our citizens is to consider the options, one of which with, which clearly outlines the retention. So I think all arguments are covered by going out and supporting this motion, because if you are opposed to disestablishment, uh, that's, that's fine at this table now, but let's hear from the citizens of Auckland on retaining or disestablishing, and that's what this motion uh, directs us to. It doesn't say that, though. It doesn't say that. Thank you. No, please, please. Can we, we hear the there. can we hear the speaker on this, uh, on that this taking the call without interference? I, I'm just just gently reminding members that that's what the options are in the paper, and it's always good to read the paper. Yep. Oh, point of order, Chair. Thank um, you, Councillor po Newman. Point of order. Point of order. Yeah, point of, Your Worship, could you just clarify that we're having a debate here about an intention on your part? to disestablish the CCO. Ev because, every, um, every one of those items out for consultation makes a proposal. So it is introduction of regional fuel tax, average general rate rises of 2.5. So you put it out as a proposal, but the point of consultation is you listen to the pros and cons around those proposals and come to a decision. You're not making a decision today, you're deciding whether or not it should be consulted upon. You will, in due course, in, in June or May of June next year, have the, 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 the right to make a decision about whether you want to adopt the proposal or reject it. That's when the real decision is made. This is purely about consultation. Okay, um, if I take the right of reply, and I thank councillors for their comments and their forbearance. Uh, it's interesting that this has been the most controversial of the items. It's not necessarily the most important of the items, uh, but it, it, there are valid arguments for and against, and I'm, I respect the arguments that people have raised, but I want, to, I want to repeat the critical point in this, which is the point that I've just made in answer to, to Councillor Newman. The decision we're making today is not the decision to disestablish ASIL. It's to go out for consultation on whether it should be disestablished. And as Councillor Darby pointed out, the, the other side of that coin is, no, we can easily make the decision, 
you can make the decision, you are the decision makers, not to disestablish it after you've heard all the evidence. The process allows for the pros and cons to be put. And the process allows for the options to be explored. And Councillor Darby is quite right to point out the information contained uh, on page 94 of your document that sets out a range of things that, for example, might be put in place around governance to provide reassurance for those of you that are concerned about that. The second point I want to make is this decision will not be made by officials, one way or the other. It will not be made by the Ports of Auckland or ASIL, one way or the other. It will not be made by anyone other than the 21 people who sit around this table. The decision will be made by us, but what I'm asking you to do is to make that decision after you've heard the debate and after we've heard the consultation and after we've got the feedback and after we have received the information that Councillor Watson, you were, uh, Councillor Walker, you were asking about before. The third point is this is not about facilitating the sale of the ports of Auckland. I think I understand Councillor Coe's point. He is slightly confused because the people most adamantly against the sale of the port and the people most adamantly for the sale of the point of the port have both suddenly decided that ACEL is supportive of their point of view. <laughs> I have put on the table the facts that I have. You could take my word or, for it or you can reject it, but ACEL has made it clear to me, as have Ports of Auckland, that they would prefer to have the sale of the port. So for those that argue that ACEL is the protector of ownership of the port, I don't understand the argument because they're lobbying for the exact opposite. The fourth question <coughs> is about interference. <coughs> and I do understand the points that uh, Councillor Cooper and to Councillor Simpson, for example, uh, have raised about interference. I do not believe that it is appropriate for this body to intervene in the commercial decision-making of the port. In fact, we're prevented from doing so by legislation. If we tried to interfere in their commercial uh, decision-making, they would take us to court and we would lose. But just so that you're reassured about the point, I've suggested in this document and with officials that there be a range of things that we would look at. And, and Councillor Cooper, we would look around how best to uh, ensure the appointment of directors. Uh, I think this council should have some say in that. I think that the port itself should have some say in that. And what we'll try to find is the proper balance uh, between those two. So I understand the concerns that you've raised, they're legitimate concerns, and they'll be taken on board by us when we, we hear the results of the consultation. Uh, the fifth point I want to uh, reassert is the point raised by the Deputy Mayor. Um, what I've found is that it's really hard communicating with the port because of ASIL. It stands between us and the port, just to have a discussion about anything. And I think that one of the advantages of disestablishment may be to improve our direct communication. Communication, not interference with commercial decision making. Yeah, right. The sixth point is the one of cost. Look, cost isn't everything. We are making savings that are relatively modest but not unimportant. Is there anybody here that thinks that five to ten million dollars savings is not important if we can make it? But the question that we'll have to answer is is ASIL currently providing value for the $10 million that we're putting into it over the decade? My impression <coughs> to begin with, I've got to say, I don't think it is. I don't think it's serving a purpose. That's some of the advice that I've got. But let's explore that. But if we don't have the consultation process, and I'll wind up on the sentence to follow my own rules, <laughs> if we don't have the process, we will never get the information, Councillor Walker, that you were asking about. So, I think you'll want to take this by division. I don't need to have a division called for. I'll ask officers to uh, call the vote, please. Mayor Gold? Four. Councillor Casey? Yes. Deputy Mayor? Four. Councillor Cloy? Yes. <coughs> Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Cooper? Four. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Filipina? Aye. Councillor Fletcher? No. Councillor Hill? Yes, thank you.
Going to a house. Hi. Councillor Mike Lee. No. Councillor Newman. What? Councillor Quex. No. Councillor Sayers. No. Councillor Simpson. No. Councillor Stewart. No. Mr John Walker. Yes. Councillor Wayne Walker. Yes. Councillor Watson. Yep. Okay, I declare that vote carried uh, 14 votes to 6. Thank you very much, and I'll declare. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've got to put. I better. I better put the the the, the, the substantive motion uh, that we adopt the mayoral proposal for items for public consultation. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Uh, Councillor Clow, I think you 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 did have your name on that, um, and a division has been called for. Okay, um, we'll do it by division and ask uh, officials to take the vote. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry, so I'm, I'm being premature. Let's do the vote on this first. Mayor Goff? Uh, aye. Councillor Casey? Yes. Deputy Mayor? Or. Councillor Clough? Or. Councillor Collins? Or. Councillor Cooper? Or. Councillor Darby? Or. Councillor Filipina? Aye. Councillor Fletcher? No. Councillor Hill? Yes. Councillor Hulse? Aye. Councillor Mike Lee? I wish to record my vote against H, but I'll vote for the rest of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Newman? Or. Councillor Quacks? Have my vote recorded against H, but otherwise, yes. Councillor Sayers? Uh, I was the same as <laughs> Councillor Quacks. I quite like that idea, so I'll be for. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Simpson? For. Councillor Stewart? I'll have my vote recorded against H, so I can flip. Thank you. Mr John Walker? For. Councillor Wayne Walker? Yes. Councillor Watson? Four. It's carried. So that's carried by a vote of 19 to 1, with four councillors registering their vote against H, which of course they have done already. Right, now um, I get back to the. We're, we're now back to the agenda, and we need to formally uh, put the motions. Um, uh, on the screen in front of you, you've got the, manage the, the motions regarding waste management. Um, I presume I can just put these, but if there is a... Oh. No, I didn't vote for these. Uh, Councillor Hill? Um, yeah, it's not a debate. Well, it is a debating point, isn't it? Just a quick comment about the waste management. So yesterday, um, there were some comments around staff and clarity, and but we voted unanimously to support the waste management, including the papakura to yep. start, but all the other details, including the fees yep. and charges, back in May. So yep. just to just to clarify for the staff's sake, the staff did the work we told them to do in May yep. um, by a unanimous vote. I oh, un understand that. We, we did have the discussion and the debate yesterday. I'd really like to move through these as quickly as possible, but I'm not trying to override any, any councillors' rights. So can I put the, uh, the recommendations uh, for waste management? All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. 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 And my vote for it, a vote recorded against A. How do we collect the rubbish in public? Uh, hang on, this is not a time for debate. We're in the middle of a vote. Um, uh, Councillor Quacks wants his vote recorded against. Uh, and Councillor Stewart. Any other? Councillor Simpson. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I declare the vote carried. Um, regulatory fees and charges, uh, C, D and E, uh, including the uh, addition yesterday by Councillor Newman. Uh, so I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried. Land advisory fees and charges, uh, recommendation F. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 
to the contrary, no, carried. Recommendation G. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, aye. no, carried. Can't see it. Sorry, am I going too fast for you? Well, we're on J, Can't but you've it. just done G. So. Uh, I've just done G. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, I can't read my screen because I've got the voting <laughs> record on it. So uh, I'm talking about recommendation J. Sorry, I'm going off my, yeah, my written. Okay. J is, we've just, we've so just put, and it's been carried. Uh, recommendation K, the Rodney Local Board targeted rate. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried. Recommendation M, uh, which M, sorry if I can have that down a bit please, M. Oh, it's oh. Sorry, it's no just M. Wait, there is no M. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that accounts for me not finding it. Uh, recommendation N. Um, which will be M. N for Newman. Um, uh, all those in favour please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried. Recommendation O, local board funding. All those in favour, please say aye. To the contrary, aye. no. Aye. Carried. Aye. Um, that's it. I'm advised. Thank you very much. I'll declare the governing body meeting closed.